Um, on to track six, which you, well, you've got that to say, you've got some from Kylie, but this is Kylie Minogue uh, from my pick. This is uh, Got to Be Certain. The first record I bought was I Should Be So Lucky. Oh, that's a good choice. Playing in Echoes. <laughs> Playing in Echoes, I remember that. And I bought Kylie's first two albums on cassette. And then maybe I thought the rhythm of love looked a bit weird. Because uh, no, no, it yeah. was changing, it was. wasn't it? It was. And probably understandably when you look back, she was trying to, uh, you know, you know, she'd left neighbours. It, it was a bit of a transition period. Um, but then the first two albums, God, I played umpteen times. And Got To Be Certain was a second single released back in 1988. The wedding, of course, of Scott Robinson and Charlie Mitchell got 20 million viewers when it aired in the UK in November 1988. But it was still, that time with Neighbours was massive. Classic it, 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 it was, it was massive. Um, the, 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 I mean, obviously, it started Aitken and Water and, you know, very successful with so many artists in the 1980s. And um, Was it, did I read this week, who was it that started Aitken and Water and, who was it? Death Leopard recorded. Was it Death Leopard recorded down with? And um, apparently, it got literally archived, and they went, "This is never to be released." I can't remember who it is. There, it was the Hysteria. So initially, they had um, the involvement from Mutt Lang, who had been involved with them over the previous couple of albums, who would go on to marry and produce uh, Shania Twain. Yes. Um, he pulled out of the project for doing what would become Hysteria. Uh, wanting a bit of a break, and they got on board Jim Steinman, Meatloaf's songwriting That's partner. That's it. Uh, but there was now. a complete disagreement uh, between Jim and the band as to how the, the record would, would go. So what bits they did was, was, was shelved, <laughs> and like I say, they're, they're sitting there, probably, probably Joe's Shed, which is the name for the, for the studio of lead singer Joe Elliott's uh, in, in Dublin. Uh, so you think they'll ever see the light of day? I suspect not. Oh, no. No. He, he was sort of quoting Dublin influences, which isn't what Def Leppard about, sort of looking at the influences from the area of the recording. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I suspect not. Suspect. <laughs> well, there you go. I knew, I, I knew I'd heard something. But then, yeah, Mutt Lang did come back on board a year or so ah. later. As, as various things happened, as we'll come on to a bit later on. Wow. Well, like here, the show. Here's Kylie. On to Jason Donovan. I bought 10 good reasons. Uh, obviously, stock cake, stock cake in the water, and again, it was an album I played over and over again. Uh, and Time Heals is a is a great album track um, off there. Uh, but I've picked until you come back to me. Jason Donovan had four UK and ones, four UK and ones. Yeah. Um, does that include the duet with Kyle? I probably would act happy. Yeah. It probably doesn't. That. And then any one drink, of them was any, any drink, drink will do. do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. From Joseph, it's amazing. Technical Nothing can divide us. Was that the other one? Yeah, possibly. Barry, um, with a kiss. Oh, bit, yeah. And I remember playing Until You Come Back to Me with the window down in Manchester, going down Oxford Road, Oxford Road again. <laughs> and then we've been to my friend Chris Barnes's gig. So this Chris. is the time of the Stone Roses in Manchester. And Chris is going up the No, road. no, this was 2006. <laughs> oh, right, okay. And, and Chris, if you're listening, Chris is now, he's um, the lead singer of the uh, Aussie Pink Floyd Band, which is doing absolutely massive across the world in the, in the touring. And we went watching Chris in this small... Uh, club uh, play and then on the way back down Oxford Road we had Jason Donovan this song on, on a loop uh, and just to see people's reaction and oh I tell you what made our night that's um, two musicians you wouldn't expect to hear in the same sentence Jason Donovan and Pink Floyd no you wouldn't but he did that, 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 that. <laughs> so um, it was I mean obviously I think I bought his first album I, I mean I have heard Between the Lines which was his second album since um and again, it was a bit like, you know, he, 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 he's kind of, uh, he went on to do Joseph, didn't he? And he, his kind of popularity dwindled for a while, mm. didn't it? But he's, he's extremely successful with stage productions. Absolutely. And the musical theatre. So, as you say, he did Joseph after that. He had a bit of a gap. Um, I've seen him a couple of times mm. in the musical Priscilla Queen of the Desert. Yes. Um, which he, he sort of popped up in. And yeah. um, he's, he's fabulous. And they Take the mick out of in, in the film version, they take the, the mick out of Abba. Um, but in the stage version, it's, uh, it's Kylie, so it's, it's even better having <laughs> Jason Donovan sort of having those references to Kylie. Oh, it's even more funny. That's brilliant. Here is Jason Donovan. Track eight is uh, Robert Palmer, She Makes My Day. And I discovered Robert Palmer. Uh, it was an obvious pick, and you knew I was going to say Robert Palmer. I picked, uh, first time Robert Palmer, when Now 13 came out, I had it on cassette, double cassette. 
Um, I'd say commercially his peak was 1985 with the album Riptide. Uh, I don't think anyone would argue with that. I, of course, had Addicted to Love on there. Um, but I'm going to play Change His Ways because I think it's, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a definitely a full-on song. It even has a bit of yodelling in there. Um, um, it's, it's got, it, the album's got lots of different influences. It's, he didn't try and just do one one thing with his music. He, he kind of went from genre to, to genre. Um, it was... Um, I, I, I think it's, it's I think it's a good album, uh, heavy over off, often kind of overlooked. But um, the uh, he didn't he didn't in terms of how much material he released, you kind of just wish he'd released more because after nineteen eighty eight he didn't release any new material. Well, yeah, I think he had Dot explained two years later nineteen ninety then riding high nineteen ninety two. Maybe it was just because he was thinking about what genres he was doing and what, what he wanted to do. <coughs> was, the, the music scene was changing so much over that period yeah. of time as well. You've got the, the pop of Stock Aiken and Waterman. Yeah, You've yeah. You've got the dance music that was coming yeah. from Europe and from America. Um, as the the nineties started, you've got the rock and grunge. Obviously, definitely not. You couldn't imagine uh, Robert Parker doing a grunge album. No, 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 no. That's fair enough to say. Um, but yeah, mate, so he, he kind of. But at the same time, he, he wasn't. He didn't just throw out things. He maybe thought about projects a bit more, and um, you know what. So I mean, Dry, his last album from two thousand and three, is brilliant. Uh, and it's it, he obviously he didn't know at the time it was going to be his last album, but it's a great one to to bow out with. It's it's a wonderful album. It's um, um, the uh, the last thing he did was um, the for Yorkshire Television. He was at Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club, and he didn't want paying. He just literally wanted a bottle of his favourite whiskey. Um, and he, he was just, it was called, I think it was called something like My Kind of Music, and he talked about his favourite musicians, and the idea was they would show clips and things like that. And then he flew over to Paris, and um, he died of a heart attack uh, in 2003. So um, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's amazing, 19 years ago, it's crazy. Uh, and I still remember being miffed at the time, because I remember the 6 o'clock news literally gave him about 15 seconds and gave Posh and Bex about a lot longer that now than you than uh, uh, than Robert Palmer had just died, and I was like, never forgive you. Um, so this is Robert Palmer. 